to make our butternut squash ravioli, of course, you're going to need a butternut squash. They are fairly easy to find in your local supermarket this time of year. We're going to need some ground cinnamon. some ground nutmeg salt and pepper some eggs and butter some fresh parmigiano reggiano cheese you need some all-purpose flour. And last but not least, we need some sage for the sauce. We are not going to use all this sage. We, you only actually need um, a quarter of a cup of sage, but I trimmed the sage bush today and I just grabbed some branches. We are going to roast the butternut squash because it's the step that takes the longest. And while the butternut squash is roasting, we can be making our pasta. So what you do is you first cut the stem off. <clears throat> These things are tough. There we go. And then you cut the butternut squash in half. going to be a little bit of a struggle. <clears throat> and then you have to scoop out these seeds. That humming in the background is my oven preheating. It's got a little fan inside that moves the air around. You don't have to throw away these seeds. You can roast them like pumpkin seeds and snack on them. My oven is now preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, it's uh, the same as 175 degrees Celsius approximately. And inside the hollow of each butternut squash, you want to put one tablespoon of unsalted butter. So cut some off right here. There we go. Here's one for you. And here's one for you. Then you want to sprinkle salt and pepper onto each half of the squash to taste.
Mm, I think that should do it. Then you cover up the butternut squash with aluminum foil. And make sure your butternut squash is cut side up. And we're going to bake the butternut squash in the oven for um, anywhere between 45 and 65 minutes. You want to bake it long enough to where it's tender when you pierce it with a fork. While our butternut squash is baking in the oven, we'll start making our pasta. I'm going to use two cups of this all-purpose flour. It's okay if it's not exact. Mm, that should do it. And then I'm going to just dump it out onto my clean work surface. Like that. Now I'm going to make a well in the center. And then I'm going to break three eggs into the center. will create a dam of flour. <laughs> They're getting away from me. Right. Then you want to put a quarter teaspoon of salt into the uh, mixture. Mm, that's close enough. Okay. And then with a fork, you just want to pierce each egg yolk, like that. Kind of make a little flower egg yolk slurry. He's just determined to escape, isn't he? You can start folding flour into the middle. It's going to look like a hot mess when you start, but it gets better. If you found that you've used too much flour, you can always add a little bit of water to your dough, a teaspoon at a time. You want to work at the dough for at least 10 minutes to really give the protein a chance to build up some elasticity. The dough should become about the same firmness as an earlobe. And when you push on it, it should spring back. Now here is a 
very important step. The dough has to rest at room temperature for at least a half hour. So we can't start rolling it into pasta right away. When you let the dough rest, you want to um, tightly wrap it in cling film so that it doesn't dry out. There we go, and we'll let it rest. So these squash are done. These took about um, 55 minutes to become fork tender. I've washed approximately a quarter cup of sage. Now I'm going to chop it up. There, that should do it. Now I'm going to grate a half cup of this fresh Parmesan. I'm going to dump out this butter from the inside of the butternut squash into our mixing bowl. Once all of your butternut squash is scraped out of their shells, we now have to mash this uh, mixture with your potato masher. And you want to get it to a real smooth consistency. Now we add our half cup of shredded Parmesan Reggiano. We're going to add two teaspoons of ground cinnamon. half teaspoon of ground nutmeg, I'll just take this whole thing off, <laughs> and 
you mix everything together till it's smooth. Season it with salt and pepper to taste. I just want to taste a little bit of this. Mmm. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> I don't think it needs any more salt and pepper. We put some on before we roasted the butternut squash. Before we use this to fill our ravioli, we first want to make sure this mixture is completely cooled. You don't want to put a hot mixture on raw dough. So we'll let this cool down. This is a device we'll be using to make our raviolis tonight. Many different companies make this type of little gadget. I think you can get them pretty much anywhere too. They're really not that expensive. I think this one costs maybe hmm, less than $25. We are ready to roll out our pasta dough. There are several ways you can do it. The old fashioned way is using a rolling pin. And then you have the option of using one of these things. It's a hand cranked pasta roller with different widths for your pasta size, and then you can roll flat sheets of pasta here. And there's a little dial here that you can adjust the width of your sheet pasta. And this thing clamps onto your table. Or you can do what I'm going to do tonight and go with full automation because I'm lazy. So I'll just attach this. There we go. You want to put your pasta roller on the widest setting. The first time you roll out the pasta, you want to fold it into thirds and run it through the machine like this to increase its elasticity of the dough. Then set your roller on the next smallest. And the next thinner one.
accidentally dropped it here. We're starting to get a little too long, so I'm going to cut it. We'll just cut off that mistake we made. setting. And this is about the thickness I want for my first layer of ravioli dough. Now what I forgot to do was put a little flour on my mold. Just helps the dough come unstuck from the mold a little bit easier. Lay your dough right over your ravioli mold. Make sure all the little holes are covered. Just like that. Then you want to slowly press the mold down onto the frame. And carefully lift up because it's probably going to stick. Just like that. And you want to make sure your pockets are nice and pockety. <laughs> right. Now you put about a teaspoon of the butternut squash ravioli filling into each one. You don't want to overfill them so that they'll burst, but you don't want to underfill them either because you want the filling to ooze out when you break the ravioli open with your fork. That might be a little too much. Now, I forgot to tell you this step, but um, you need to take one egg and beat it so that you can use it as um, a way to seal your raviolis. If you don't have egg, you can use water. Water's fine too, but in my opinion, I think egg makes it stick a little bit better. All right. Now we need to make another sheet of dough to go on top of this sheet. start again with our widest setting. Okay, we're way too long here, so I'm going to cut off this part here. But before I put this piece of pasta on top of this. I'm going to take my finger here and just put egg around the borders of each ravioli. This is going to essentially be our glue. Gotta work 
work fast so they don't dry before I get the other pinks of dough on. piece of ravioli dough right on top of your frame, just like that. Okay. Get it warmed up. Kind of give it a little precedence of place, a little bit. Now you take your rolling pin and you just want to kind of roll along the top of your ravioli frame essentially kind of pressing pressing these little serrated bits down it helps the ravioli come apart Then you want your surface where you put out the tor um, ravioli, you want it to have flour on it so your raviolis don't stick. So I'll put a little more flour here. Just kind of spread it out. Invert your frame. Just give it a little tap. And they should come, they should come free with a little bit of help. All right, oops. then you just kind of want to separate each ravioli just like that if you need a little help getting these apart you can use a ravioli knife it's like a, a little small rotary wheel that has a little wavy blade on the end and it's Good way to cut raviolis out. You can take your extra dough and wad it up and run it through your pasta, uh, <laughs> run it through your pasta maker again. So none of it gets wasted. These ravioli are ready to go into the pot. Here on our stove top is the water that we're going to use to boil our ravioli and our skillet for making the sage butter sauce. We're going to start with the sage butter sauce. You want to have your skillet set to medium heat. Then you want to put in a quarter cup of unsalted butter. And then you let the butter melt. Once your butter is completely melted, add your quarter cup of shredded sage. Now 
Now you want to stir the sage around in the butter until the sage gets a little crispy, but not brown. In the meantime, we're going to start our water boiling for the ravioli. You want to salt your water. And we'll wait for that to come to a boil before we put in the ravioli. I'm going to turn down the heat a little bit on this butter sage sauce because it's starting to smoke a little too fast. There we go. You want your butter to take on a light brown color. All right, I can tell it's getting close. The sage is starting to feel a little crispy, but it needs another, it needs a little bit more. Now my sage brown butter sauce got a little too brown, but that's okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this heat off on the sage butter sauce. I overcooked my butter sauce a little bit, so my sage is a little bit too brown. You want to stop it cooking before I did. All right, when your pot of water comes to a full boil, then you add your raviolis. I'm only cooking a few this time. I'm not going to do the whole batch, so I'm only going to cook 12. And you want them to be in the boiling water between about three and five minutes to make sure the dough is fully cooked. I turned the heat down a little bit uh, because I didn't want the pot to boil over. You can kind of tell when they're almost ready, when they start to get puffy in the water and they all float to the top. If you're going to cook a larger batch of ravioli, then obviously you would use a bigger pot and more water. Right, you see how the raviolis are starting to puff up? Those are just about done. We just need another couple minutes for the rest to catch up. All right, all of the raviolis are puffed up and they're all floating to the top, so I'm gonna turn off the heat. And transfer them to my bowl.
going to pour a little bit of brown butter sauce over the top of my pasta. All right, let's see how it tastes. But first, I'm gonna put a little more Parmesan cheese on the top because I love Parmesan cheese. Let's taste it. <laughs> it's really good. I've never made this before, but I'm definitely going to make it again. <laughs> this is really good. It tastes, the, the browned butter tastes almost really, it's got like a hint of caramel in it. Now the sage I did overcook, but the sage isn't really overpowering at all, even though we added what looked like a lot, but it wasn't. It all kind of blends really well with the butternut squash and all of those other spices that were in it. You can see the, um, see it kind of oozing out, not too much, not too little, just right. It's so good. I need to save a couple for Jack because he's been waiting so patiently. <laughs> We'll get Jack two of them. He's been gaining a little weight. All right, Jack, I saved a couple of pieces for you because I know you were waiting so patiently. Thank you so much. I'll feed it to you. Go easy. What do you think? The butternut is a very subtle combination with the nutmeg, isn't it? It's really good. Do you like the Parmesan on top? There you go, last piece. There you go. What'd you think of that? Did you like that? Do you think I should make that again for you? <laughs> All right, I will. <laughs>